What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you guys are having a great, great Monday. It has been crazy, of course, today. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready. I got to go out of town tomorrow to work down on the my rental properties and things, and hopefully I'm meeting tomorrow the uh, engineer from the power company on the power for the red brick house. But this morning we learned, of course, the worst fears that came true. Terrence Steele's knee, he has torn the ACL. He is done for the season. Um, at the moment, it looks like Jason Peters is going to be the one stepping in. Hopefully Tyron Smith will be ready to actually play and play on the left side. And Tyler Smith will be the left guard, and hopefully maybe we can keep this offensive line together. Um, one of the problems we had yesterday was actually protecting Dak. Um, when Terrence Steele went down, Josh Ball was not the answer. And thank God that Jason Peters was able to step in on that last drive because he literally saved the game. And so from there, of course, we had Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Man, that got ugly. Uh, Skip Bayless literally had a personal attack on Shannon Sharp, basically telling him he was a nobody in comparison to Tom Brady and this, that, and the other, and saying, you're just jealous of Tom. And I mean, it just got ugly. When, when Shannon Sharp took off the glasses, I thought he was about to go over there and bitch slap Skip Bayless, something actually Skip Bayless deserves to get. And now the Dallas Cowboys have signed T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, former Colt uh, wide receiver, um, hasn't played since 2019. He's five foot ten, 183 pounds. Um, is not as fast, I'm sure, as he used to be. He is 33 years old, but uh, doesn't have any wear and tear on his body right now. He's not coming back from a knee surgery, thing like that. Um, was signed by the Dallas Cowboys, and we're going to give you a little taste of what he's had. Um, in his career, he's had 631 receptions, um, 53 TDs, 9,691 yards. It'd be great if he came to the Cowboys and got to 10,000 yards, wouldn't it? Um, his best season... Uh, or most yards in a season was 2016 with 1,448 yards, a 15.9 yard average. And the thing about T.Y. Hilton is with his career average of 15.4 yards per reception, um, he's been a deep threat. Now, again, he's not going to have the speed that he had, and he hasn't played in a couple of seasons, but He's very instinctive, and he has abilities, and, and being a veteran, he knows how to um, find the scenes, find the soft spots, and do a lot of good things for him. And I think this is actually a good signing. Um, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to say this much. The Cowboys don't make big splashes when it comes to free agents, okay? Most of the time... When we sign somebody, people will say, oh, this guy's a bum, or this guy is washed up, or this guy's old. But what you find out is the guys they end up signing, for the most part, become productive players, role players for them. You know, we were all looking, of course, at, you know, Bobby Wagner and things, and they end up holding out and waiting on Anthony Barr. And Anthony Barr has done some good things for our team this year. He's had a few nagging injuries and things like that, but he's been a good signing. Um, Hankins, who we're worried about if he's going to be lost, in the few games he's been here, he's actually played really, really well. These are not big-name signings, and you could also look at um, – um, Hilton's former teammate, Malik Hooker, which is another $2 million guy that coming off an injury that we signed has played outstanding for us for the two years he's been here. So when the Cowboys actually look and make a move on these guys, very few of them end up being complete bust. So I will give the Cowboys credit and some latitude towards that because you need a veteran. You need a guy who knows the tricks. And see, the difference between being a young guy is you're going to be able to jump higher, run faster, you know, and things. And you can use more of your physicality. That's the thing that was great about Des Bryant. Des Bryant was just stronger and faster and could jump higher than other players. 
But as you get older, you don't have that speed and the strength and things any longer. That's when you, you learn the secrets. You, you end up learning to be precise in your run, route running and things like that. And that's where you become like an Anton Bolden, whose career goes on and on and on, changing from being a number one to being more of a slot receiver and things. And so this is the hope, of course, with T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton has played some good games. He is experienced, and he definitely can be a help to this team, if nothing more than depth. Um, so I will take that myself and say I'm happy about them at least getting him. I really wish – this is one of those things that um, I don't understand is – He's been out there all off season and all season. Why didn't the Cowboys do something about this sooner? Try him out sooner. Um, you know, this is this is like what I used to do in school. I know I got a paper that's due in three weeks. Okay, now it's due in two weeks. I got time. Now, I know I got a paper that's due in a week. Oh, I got time. And here it is. It's two days before the paper is due. That's when I'm getting started on it. I was stupid because then I'm rushed. I don't have enough time to really get it going. I don't really have time to proof it, although now it's easy because you got the computers. But back in my day, you had to actually read it a couple of times to proofread it. That's why they called it proofreading, not have somebody else scan it. And that seems to be the Cowboys, because here it is, you know, we've been scrambling for Odell Beckham Jr., and, you know, now it's T.Y. Hilton. It's like, you've known all season you've had a problem at wide receiver. Why do you always wait to the last minute? You did it with Brandon Cooks. You wanted Brandon Cooks, but you waited till the last minute to try and make a deal. Stop waiting till the last second to do this. Now, as far as Odell Beckham Jr., what we're hearing is this doesn't have any bearing on their desire to bring in Odell. Mm. Well, I'd say if James Washington had come in and played really well yesterday, more than likely this T.Y. Hilton uh, move wouldn't be done today. And I dare say if T.Y. Hilton in the next, you know, can somehow get on the field sometime soon and plays well, that it will have effect on Odell Beckham Jr. whether or not he comes here. Because these are moves that are kind of made out of desperation. But um, according to Mike McCarthy, they had a great visit with them. The physical was was perfect. They plan on getting him out on the practice field on Wednesday and getting him in there. So you may actually see him on the field sooner than later. I would think it may be advantageous to play him a few plays versus the Jaguars than waiting until Christmas Eve to play against the Eagles for your first game. But what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job. Um, Stephen Holder says, Cowboys are a great situation for a veteran like T.Y. Hilton playing alongside a number one like CeeDee Lamb who will attract a lot of attention. And with a strong running game, he will continue to do what he has done uh, so well late in his career. Attack zone defenses with his veteran Sabe. Sabe. Uh, Ed Werder, speaking to a few people around the league about T.Y. Hilton signing with the Cowboys, the word most commonly used to describe him is instinctive. Doesn't have the speed he once possessed, but is a very capable wide receiver of intelligence and high-level instinct for the position. Despite, this is Ed Werder again, despite signing of T.Y. Hilton, I'm told by sources that the Cowboys remain interested in pursuing Odell Beckham Jr. Um... Let's see if we see some more good ones. Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore on recently signed wide receiver T.Y. Hilden. Tremendous depth to sign a guy like T.Y. in December. He can definitely still run. So that's kind of the word that we're getting out of the Dallas Cowboys on signing of T.Y. Um, we'll find out what he still has in the tank. Uh, I'm just going to check Twitter here. Uh, as you can tell, I'm covered with, with paint and sawdust and stuff from working in the workshop. We've got um, a lot of uh, orders that we're trying to make sure we get done um, for you guys for Christmas and before I go tomorrow. 
The Cowboys are securing veteran wide receiver, help after all, signing line time. Colt star T.Y. Hilton, his agent, tells me and Jane Slater the visit today and uh, with the team today should provide help down the stretch and the playoffs. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Jane Slater, the Cowboys are securing veteran wide receiver help after all. Oh, okay, that's the same thing. Oh, so he retweeted. He retweeted Jane Slater. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. Connor Lindsay. We hoeing, uh, hoeing over a 48-year-old T.Y. Hilton and Obel Jackham Jr. with one working knee. Miss you, Amari. That ain't no lie. Uh, Cowboys fan talk. Before we make T.Y. Hilton jokes, remember, Cowboys are a top three offense right now and score 70, 27 points on an off day, which is true, which is kind of crazy when you think about um, where we were at 27 earlier in the season. So we're averaging uh, for the season 27.7 points a game. And I think we're still averaging like 35 a game since Dak's been back. So, yeah. So that's what we got. God, I see you working. I promise I do. Okay. That was actually T.Y. Hilton yesterday. I see why the media loves talking about the Cowboys. I swear there's never an off day. Thought I was going to enjoy a cool little victory Monday and chill. Nope. Here's T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Tuck. Time to get to work. That ain't no, I'm telling you, it's crazy. There is, that's what I tell people. They're like, well, what do you do in the off season? I'm like, when is there an off season? Um, literally, I was telling, it was Michael. Michael, who was here from uh, California. Um. I said, you got to understand, I said, you know, whether we're in the playoffs and hopefully we're in the playoffs deep and maybe to the Super Bowl, but the Super Bowl is now the middle of February. And that's kind of between the middle of February until about the middle of March, you, you know, you're contemplating coaches being fired during that time. And the Cowboys are always have some drama with the coaches and free agents that are going to be let go and free agents that you're going to possibly sign. So middle of March, then you got free agent frenzy. You also have... Um, the combine that's going on and then you have building up to the draft you know so now you're talking about to the end of april and so then you've got after the draft the players that you drafted and breaking them down and so on and you got then the otas and stuff and the you know workouts and stuff that go through may and then it's kind of like june that kind of ends and so from like the middle of june till you know training camps open up it's really about six weeks a time and even during that six weeks, it's speculating on what is the team going to do at this position and that one. So there is no off time. But we'll see how this one works. At least you can say the Cowboys are trying to make up for their mistake of getting rid of Amari Cooper. All right, I will see you guys at 8 o'clock. We'll have the latest on this, as well as watching a snooze fest Monday night football game. And uh, hope to see you then.